Ladies and gentlemen, Mish of Terizon! Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> awesome to see you again. How have you been? Good, really good. Really busy, but good. Good, great to see you. Thanks for having me. That was the best intro ever. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, Mish, for those that may not may not know you or, or your band, please plug and promote anything you'd like. Tell us whereabouts in the world you are at the moment and just uh, what's going on in your life lately. Awesome. Well, I'm front an alternative rock band called Horizon. I'm from Brisbane, Australia, and it is so hot here right now. I don't know if you can tell, but all the humidity is getting to me right now. <laughs> um, our music is inspired by Hailstorm, Evanescence, Tonight Alive, which is another awesome um, Australian band. You can find us anywhere, all di di major distribution platforms, um, if you just type in Horizon. And we just dropped some new merch that has eight bit versions of ourselves, which is adorable. Excellent. Excellent. Hell yeah. How hot is it over there right now? Cause it's kind of cold where I'm at. Oh man, it is hot. So um, it's about 32 degrees here, but it's like 80% humidity. It's just, it makes it so much worse. <laughs> so you're, you mean Celsius? Yeah. Okay, okay. So I, we don't do Celsius over here, so I have no idea how hot that is, but I'm assuming it's, Ooh, it's quite hot. Let me see. <laughs> it's, it's pretty hot. It's pretty hot. I was like, like dang, that's snowing. Gets... That's snowing over here, but it's 32 degrees. <laughs> that's crazy. What, what's, what's the band been up to lately? Um, writing. We finished, we, I, I kind of spent like a, I had like a, I, just like everybody else in the world, 2022 was a bit of a dumpster f fire for me personally. So I took some time away to just like write. So we recorded a bunch of singles last year, which are really heavy, which nobody's expecting that from us, which is awesome. Um, it includes some guest vocalists as well. And and we're currently writing a new EP. May yeah. I May I know who the producer is? Absolutely. Kalen Austin from Brisbane. He has worked uh, his, on his own band, which is great, The Stranger. And also Chris Blancato, who worked with Relica and North Lane. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, we've we've yeah. had Relica on a couple of times. They're awesome as well. And you're you're I fairly love... close with uh, with The Last Martyr as well, right? Yeah, yeah. All of them bands. They all stay at my house when they're touring. Oh, very cool. That's kind of you. Hell yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my co-host today is Metallic. Vitalik, this is Mish. Uh, do you have any, any questions for Mish before we jam a song? Uh, an oldie, but one of my favorites, Burning Away. I actually do have a good question for you. So between, uh, say, 2019 and then when COVID hit and now, what, what, gives you, what gave you inspiration in that time to write music? Um, the, the world burning, literally. Um, I think it was, I just felt very isolated, just like everybody else. And also seeing the creative community, at least in Australia, where uh, when the bushfires happened, the creative community were the ones that like funded all of this money towards helping everybody out. And as soon as COVID hit, just very much like a couple of months after that, the arts were kind of just like left to fend for themselves. We all lost our jobs. Like I, I had a couple of band members that couldn't continue to be in the band because of that reason, because um, it's not cheap, unfortunately. And they were in the music industry and, and lost income. So I just felt quite isolated and also kind of felt like the world was just crashing around me, just like everybody else in the world. Um, and the one thing that I'm so passionate about music and, and having to let members go because of that situation, which is so out of everybody's control, um, kind of kept me motivated. I feel like if I'm not writing music, I feel like I'm just like giving up on life. So I have to, <laughs> I have to keep doing that. Don't Gotta stop. Keep your drive yeah. going. Don't stop. Don't stop writing. Uh, let's play. <laughs> let's. Is it, if if you'd prefer we play something else, that's fine. I just like people to get the visuals also going. Oh, it's yeah, cool. go for it. All right, cool. cool. Hell yeah! Please support Horizon. Hit the sub button like I have right here on so YouTube. Hit the you. follow button on Spotify like I have as well right there. Support them out of Brisbane, Australia. <laughs> Time you actually watch this video. Oh, it's been, I try not to watch my older stuff, <laughs> so it doesn't influence my newer writing. Uh, it's been at least a year. <laughs> for sure. Uh, is there is there a rough timetable for when the first single from this new music might be released? Yeah, yes. We've been actually speaking with our management and fleshing out a plan. Um, without giving too much away, there is an international tour as well. Um, so the first single will come out, there's two singles standalone that are coming out later this year. So thinking about August, September, and October, November. 
Awesome. Now, I know you're not allowed to tell us anything. No. As a publicist, also, I can't. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, fingers crossed that, that somehow California has worked into those plans. So we'll just leave oh, it at that. Fingers oh. crossed. Hell yeah. You will be the first to know. So oh, yes, please right. do. So we can help promote <laughs> in any way possible and support you. Um, let's see. And then you said you have some features. Is there, I know you also can't reveal that, but is there something we kind of wouldn't expect feature wise? Absolutely. It was, the feature was kind of very out of the blue. So the day we were recording this song, I'll give you the names of the song, screw it. Um, so there's a song called Damage and there's a song called Mara. Um, when we were recording Mara, I was, oh my God, I feel like I'm going to be such a bummer. I was just not having a good time last year. Okay. And like when we were recording this track, I had accidentally skipped my medication which is SSRIs just like everybody else in the world and I just felt super like I got brain zaps and I had like a chronic pain flare up and it was just like a terrible headspace to be in and and what I was putting out that day recording wise it just wasn't really it was good but it wasn't there yet so my producer Kaylin who was recording me that he's like do you mind if I just throw a couple of vocals on there because I think if we just layer it it'll be great and we did and so it's Kaylin Austin from The Stranger um who's a guitarist and a producer of the band but ended up featuring vocally <laughs> hell yeah very very cool yeah yeah what's what's the common you said that you have a lot of bands stay at your place when they're on tour I'm sure you've heard a lot of touring stories and stuff like that what is a common mistake that you see a lot of bands making that you don't want uh, a, a, a band that's about to go on tour to make? For sure. Okay, so I have so much to say here. And this is more as me working as a music publicist, um, promoting tours with bands, um, as well as like people that have stayed here. The people that stay here are close friends of mine and they're very organized bands, so they never fall into this category. So that's great. But mostly when people book tours in, they don't factor in promoting a release so like they would just book a tour and it's like okay well why what's the incentive for people to purchase your tickets and see you so always tie it in with a release and don't book your venues before your masters is ready before you've got a release date in mind because a lot of people book the venues and then sacrifice their release because a venue's booked um because you know masters didn't happen in time or there was a delay in the film clip and then you don't get a chance to promote the song properly which then is detrimental to the tour. Wow, that is really, really good advice, I would say. Fantastic. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Metallic, we'll do a couple more. What what else do you have for uh, for Mish? Uh, in terms of gear, what, what would you say to a starting out uh, musician gear-wise? Like, go with your gut on getting something or take it easy on and... You mean like ex something get... expensive yeah. or a particular brand? Yeah, yeah. something expensive or go go the cheaper route if, I mean, if you can. If you I have feel to. like, okay, good question. Personally, I feel like you should, if you're, this is going to sound, this is going to divide some people. If you're really serious about it and if it's something you want to do for the long haul, definitely invest in good gear because it definitely makes it worth it. It's going to be there for a while. We are sort of in a position where we, it's just a three piece band. So we run bass as a backing track, which is my guitarist, Luke, he plays bass as well. Um, and we run like all the keys and stuff, all the samples through the backing track. So in order to, to tour in a way where it's not going to cost me an arm and a leg, transferring all the amps, we just run all digital. So we've got Kemper profilers, we've got like everything just in a couple of big rack units and it's easier to take it on tour um so and again like if we would have cut corners on that then it makes set up a big problem sound engineers then hate us so we make sure like all the writers and everything's provided and we invested in that gear so it's it makes touring easier and sound and engineers do not hate us so yeah don't want that don't want them hating you when you're playing <laughs> no. that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we'll just do a couple more and then we'll let you go. We appreciate your time. Uh, but where, where is a place in the world, maybe it's coming up on this international, maybe it's not, that you would like to play more than any other country? Germany. It's not in this tour. <laughs> Germany. Germany. Interesting. Yeah. Why there? I don't know. Just Germany, Finland. Um, I don't know. Mecca metal, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> Some good spots right there, I would say. Absolutely. <clears throat> Japan, like Japan is somewhere that I, which most simply featuring on this tour, um, is somewhere I also want to play because it it's just so cool. I worked with a Japanese band in publicity called Sailing Before the Wind, and they were just so fun to work with. And all the stories that I heard, I was like, okay, I really want to do that. Very cool. And then we'll end on a fun one. 
I know uh, <laughs> marijuana is illegal in Australia. I'm not sure if you partake, but let's just say it's one of those party nights. Something goes down. What is your go-to munchy snack? Oh, okay. Um, firstly, I partake. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Um, weed every day. <laughs> <laughs> In legal circumstances, Pete, don't come at me. Legally. Um, okay, so this is a two-part thing. So I always like a cup of tea and apricot jam on toast. Interesting. Ooh. I, it's not Together. like a crazy candy or some chips. It's like a legit little sit down, almost tea and crumpets right there. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I'm not, I'm, I'm that's really classy. Not that that's classy. It's like a comfort food over like eating. Oh, like let's go get a hot dog, bro. <laughs> She's like, nah, what I'm are just... your snack? You tell me. Uh, me, I love chicken wings more than anything. But if it's one of those moods, probably I love salt and vinegar chips. But you, if I eat too many, though, it like slices. I feel like it cuts my lips, if that makes any sense. So I have only a small amount at a time. But I love salt and vinegar chips. Yeah, same. My, my, usually my go-to. My go-to is the, the chips, uh, mainly just like uh, sea salt and pepper. And then the gummies, of course, like gummy worms, gummy bears, and stuff yeah. like that. Sour gummy awesome. worms, for sure. Hell oh, yeah. yeah. Mitch, what do you got going on the rest of the day? I know it's a little early over there. Oh, I'm working. <laughs> Cool. I'm working from home, so that that's cool. Um, and then I'm finishing um, some of my vocal tracking. Is it an MBA sign ball behind you in the background, or is that just a uh, random? No. Is this a random like a random CGI background, or is that your real? It's it's my office studio. It's really it, that's not an NBA sign ball. Although I do I used to follow the NBA. Um, that's just my basketball that I take down the road and shoot hoops with that part. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, who's your, who was your NBA team? Um, Boston Celtics. Oh no! We were doing so good. <laughs> I'm a Lakers fan, so we're rivals. It's all good, Mitch. We appreciate the time. We're we're really excited. You said August is probably about the earliest we might be able to get get our hands on that single. We're excited yeah. about it. Please let me know, especially if California is in your future. But regardless, we're going to continue to support you any way we can. Horizon's amazing. Thank you again for your time. We appreciate it so much. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Have a fantastic day, ladies and gentlemen. Mish of Tarazan! Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> Have a great one, thank you.